In this video, we'll be talking about how to combine Active Recall with two other ineffective techniques, highlighting and rereading using the apps Notion and Notability in order to do your exam-oriented Active Recall. Now, if you are a student, then chances are that you have probably heard about the terms Active Recall and spaced repetition multiple times before, right? And how these two are extremely effective because they consolidate our information, our short-term information into our long-term memory. Oh no, is he again going to talk about Active Recall and spaced repetition? Stop it, man. Let's see what he talks about. Be a little patient, okay? How dare you call me a patient? Don't talk to me like that, okay? I'm not a patient. I'm healthy. No, no. I did not mean to call you patient but just just wait you know just wait and at the same time we have also heard about how ineffective um, highlighting and rereading are simply because these techniques are extremely passive however the good news is that to ace my exams I take out the best things from highlighting and rereading or the best aspects and combine those with active recall in order to get the best possible results What's cooking sapiens? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Arham and I'm a fourth year medical student at the University of Oslo in Norway. So before we get into how I do exam oriented active recall by combining the best aspects of rereading and highlighting with active recall, let's talk about how I practice active recall in normal days like when there is no exam going on or like outside of the exam season I guess. And this background information is going to be necessary to understand how I do exam oriented active recall. So the point is that when there is no exam going on or in normal days, I simply go through the questions that I make on the app Notion and answer them. And while doing so, I also keep on color grading the questions which I am not able to answer. So for example, if I'm not able to answer a question, I'll color graded as red and then after I completed a certain topic or the questions from a certain topic let's say heart failure then I go to my retrospective revision timetable and just you know give myself a rating and write down the date for the day or for like when I revised that topic and I explain this in a separate video in much more detail so if you want to check it out here's a link so just click on that and you get to the link where I explain how I use Notion to take active recall questions. So the point being that I keep on doing this during the entire semester till the exam season arrives and hopefully when the exam season arrives I have already actively recalled all my different topics or revised all my topics at least twice and then four weeks before my exams that is when I start doing this exam oriented active recall and that is exactly what we're going to talk about now. So as I already said, assuming that I have done my two revisions before the exam season kicks in, I start my third revision and this is step number one. So I start my third revision where the idea is that I start off with the weakest points. So remember that I gave myself ratings whenever I did active recall, right? So if I, let's say, was really not comfortable with a certain topic, I don't know, let's say stroke, and I gave myself a two out of five, then that's what I'm going to begin with because these are my weakest, we, my my weakest points. So as step one, start off by asking yourself the simple question that, okay, if the exam was to be tomorrow, which topic would I be the least comfortable with? So if the exam was to be tomorrow, which topic would I be the least comfortable with? Hmm, I love that. Actually, I'm not comfortable with any topic. <laughs> Can you just stop interrupting and listen to him, please? I'm sorry, man. Take it easy. Yes, Arham, go on. So step number two in this exam-oriented active recall is that when you're doing your third revision, you start noting the things, writing down the things using the app Notability or any other app if you may prefer. So uh, I, per I personally prefer Notability and yeah, that's just me, personal preference. But the point is that you start noting down the things or writing the things which you are not able to answer. So, for example, if I have a question that says, how exactly do you differentiate between Parkinson's dementia and Lewy body dementia? And if I struggle to remember or actively recall the answer to this question, then I'll note the answer down in the app Notability or in any other app because I'm going to use these exact notes later on. Now, even though I do not like to use, do not like to take notes while studying because note taking as like summarization is also, according to evidence, actually not that effective. So I don't like taking notes, but the point is that you can utilize the positive aspects of note taking in the exam oriented active recall method to, to, to just, you know, really ace or, you know, to get the best possible results. So yeah, take notes uh, for the things that you were not able to remember while doing your third revision. And as a side note, this is how I organize my notes in Notability. So I have a divider, let's say, which divides my current semester. So 
the fourth module or the fourth year. And then we have subject divider, which divides the subject. So neurology, pharmacology, ENT, ophthalmology, etc. And then within these subject dividers, I have got the different topics for within that subject. So within neurology, we have Parkinson's, Alzheimer, you know, stroke, um, ALS, etc. So this is how I organize everything in Notability. And secondly, how exactly do I make these notes? Now, this is completely up to you. I personally do not like to, you know, just write down notes. I personally like to make these amazing spider diagrams and mind maps because, well, tons of evidence has also shown that how making spider diagrams and mind maps increases the bigger, the understanding of the bigger picture, because you can see like um, the, the main topic in the middle and all these different brand, different subtopics branching out from that main topic. So it helps you understand the bigger picture and, do not, and not lose the forest from the trees. So that's how I personally like to do it, like by making spider diagrams about the things which I was not able to recall during my third revision this is step number two in the exam-oriented active recall. Ah, this is starting to make sense. Keep going, keep going. Now let's talk about step number three in exam-oriented active recall. And this is where you just simply review your spider diagrams or mind maps or notes, whatever you have made and not worry about active recall. So the idea is that you simply skim through or review and not just go through quickly your notes, be them spider diagrams or mind maps, and then, and stop, and do not worry about active recall because we will get back to that in a moment. Because the idea here is that uh, even though, even though rereading is, you know, passive and not really that efficient, but the good point about rereading is that you save a lot of time. So you, you take the notes that you made in the app Notability and review them passively just go through them, skim through the notes so that this will refresh your memory and do this for every single topic. And the biggest benefit of doing this is that you firstly refresh the material and then secondly, you are able to go through the exam, the entire course material or the exam material in a few days, like in maximum two or three days if you are efficient and fast enough. Personally, I can do this in, in a couple of days because I have done this so many times now that I have really gotten used to this habit and it, and it goes extremely fast once I get into that, you know, um, what do you call it, um, flow state. And then again, the point being that you're not completely relying on rereading, which according to evidence is not efficient, but you're combining the combining this with active recall, you know, and just taking the best from both the worlds and putting it together. So once you have revised all the spider diagrams, it is time to go back to active recall, which is step number four. And now you probably do understand what he was saying, right? So just have some patience, man. You always start criticizing him already in the start. Just be patient and listen to him. Okay, okay, you were right. You were right. I was wrong. You win, I lose, okay? And now comes step number four, which is probably going to be the last step for a lot of you guys and sometimes for me as well, because step number five is not really mandatory, but an, but an extra step which will help consolidate information even further. So the point being that step number four is that you start doing active recall once again for the entire, for all the topics that you have, uh, that you have to cover for your exam. And here the idea is that you, that before you start looking at the spider diagrams, this is important guys. Before you start looking at the spider diagrams, start and actively recall whatever you can, you know about that particular topic. And do this before even looking at the questions because questions can oftentimes end up giving us a minor hint. So just see, so if I'm talking about, let's say uh, stroke, right? So I go to the topic stroke and before I look at the questions, before I look at the spider diagrams, I try and recall everything I know about the topic stroke in order to avoid any hints and any information that could help me retrieve information. So this is going to be extremely raw, hardcore active recall, okay? So this was step number four and I promise you guys that by this point, most or like 85% of the material that you are trying to learn will be consolidated and you will ace your exam. However, however, there is a step number five where the idea is that if you still have like a couple of days extra for your exam and you like, you're on the right path, you have some extra time, you know, just you want to do one extra revision, one extra revision, then the idea is that you simply, simply go to your spider diagrams and then again, just simply skim through the, posh, the parts or the things that you were not able to recall in step number four. So remember that we that in step in step number four we were supposed to highlight the things that we were not that we were not able to answer. So in step number five, the idea is that you simply go 
through those highlighted things as fast as possible. And this is step number five, which again is not mandatory because I can almost guarantee that after step number four, you will be most likely comfortable with the entire course. But however, if you have any more, if you have more time to kill and you don't want to really ace your exam and you know, just be a top notch student, like, I don't know, not like me at least, um, well, yeah. And then in that case, you can simply do step number five. Just hit that subscribe button. I mean, for the YouTube algorithm, you know. That's the wrap for today, Sapiens. I hope you found the video useful. And if you did, then you might also want to check out this video, which will surely add some value to you guys. So thanks for watching this one. And I'll see you on the other side. Take care. Peace.